Unveiling the histories of the most dangerous female prisoners, unearth stories of crime, manipulation, and horror that shock the conscience. Each tale reveals the dark side of human nature, where ordinary women transform into notorious criminals. Nineteenth-century killing machine, and no one in her life was safe. Not her husband, not her stepkids, not her mother, and certainly not her own children. Women are perceived as having a soft heart. It turns out that certain ladies have a dark side and commit violent murders until their crimes cause the world to tremble, like true crime news from David Cam. Dave Cam. If you are a fan of True Crime Daily or Crime Watch Daily, in this video, we'll investigate the Torture Girls psychology of this crime, identify 10 lady serial killers with vicious, murderous goals, and explore any possible motives. Many questions come up, such as how a woman could be a vicious killer, and why did they do this atrocity? Investigating the motivation behind Hainu's killings. Numerous different factors contribute to the horrific murders committed by women. Some women may commit murder, as a form of retaliation for past abuse. They believe that taking the lives of those who have harmed them is the only way to bring about justice. In addition, there are greed, overpossession, and jealousy-based motivations. Whoa, it really is awful, isn't it? There are many reasons to grant her wants, including the desire to kill. Put an end to the discussion and check out these 10 famous serial killers female whose horrific murder cases throwing the world. Elizabeth Bathory. The real vampire woman is the nickname for Elizabeth Bathory because she was a noblewoman from Hungary who allegedly abused her wealth and status to commit horrible acts of torture and murder. Surprisingly, Bathory married a nobleman and she managed to convince her husband to build a torture room where she killed more than 600 girls from poor families. Not until then does Bathory come to believe that the blood of the girls can make her beautiful and make her eternal. Her sadistic methods included inhumanly cutting limbs with a knife or using other torture tools even burning the victim alive. Because of Bathory's position and power, many of the victim's families didn't dare to fight out of fear of punishment. Until finally in 1610, a waiter, who was also a survivor, brought it to the authorities. Bathory was eventually sentenced to life imprisonment and died in 1614. This is a true crime case of demonstrating a cruel abuse of power for her own sake without a sense of empathy. What do you think of this first case? Did it make you feel terrible? Jane Toppen. Who's not attracted to this beautiful face of Jane Toppen? Behind her glamorous face, it turns out she was a famous serial killer in the United States in the 19th century. The surprising fact is, that Jane Toppen worked at the Cambridge Hospital in 1885 as a nurse and secretly poisoned her patients with drugs like morphine and atropine. Toppen did this because she was pleased to see her patients suffer. Is this a psychopath? Her cruelty was never suspected because she was one of the most talented and trusted nurses in her field. After many years in 1901, there was a family suspected of the unnatural death of a family member. The victim's family requested an autopsy and the results showed an overdose of the drug given. In court, Jane Toppen admitted to having killed at least 31 people and had no guilt. The court sentenced her to life in a psychiatric hospital for having a mental disorder. How could this even be kept in order for six years when she's killed 31 people? For her own sake, it it's unbelievable that someone who's very talented in the job, very trustworthy, and has no slightest suspicion if she has a dark side turns out to be a serial killer. Wow, what do you guys think? Guys, Mary Flora Bell.
Next, there's a case from 11-year-old girl named Mary Flora Bell. Bell looks like a beautiful and normal kid, right? But don't be disappointed, the action she's taking can make you crazy. How can an 11-year-old commit a brutal murder? It all started with Mary Flora Bell, who was born into a messed-up family in 1957. Bell often exhausts her emotions by using torture to kill her dogs and cats. Here we can see that Bell already has a psychopathic tendency, right? In May 1968, Mary Flora Bell had a mate named Norma Joyce Bell, not included in the family. They like to gather small children to play with, and after that they are hurt or even killed by sadism, like her first murder by dropping a four-year-old boy from a high-rise building to death. For months, they've been carrying out the murders for no reason until they annoyed the public. Finally, in August 1968, they were both arrested and the case became a media highlight in Crime News Daily because it was hard to believe an 11-year-old boy had committed a terrible act. They were also sentenced to life in prison for Mary Flora Bell and 12 years for Norma Joyce Bell. Is it hard for you to believe this brutal murder was committed by children? Andrea Yates How does a situation become tragic when a mother suffers domestic violence and violence against women and has five children? This is the story of Andrea Yates, who was born and raised in a good and peaceful family, but faced psychological challenges since she was a teenager. In 1989, Yates married and was blessed with five children. This family, which seems to be very happy in the suburbs of Houston, hides a secret. A mental disorder that Yates had since she was a teenager, but she ignored her condition to the point of despair, feeling herself failed as a mother and wife, which triggered domestic violence and romance problems. In June 2001, in a terrible morning, Yates brutally ended the lives of her five children, aged six months to seven years, in a very cruel way. After that, Yates was arrested and sentenced to life sentence, adding tragedies of domestic violence and brutal murders to the record. Andrea Yates's case triggered the pros and cons in society. Some blame. Yates wondering how he can be so cruel to his own children, but some defend Yates and understand his mental condition. This case highlights the importance of crime, prevention and dealing with domestic violence. Isabella Guzman What we usually do when we fight with mom? Hunting or escaping from home? Isabella Guzman, an 18-year-old woman, took a very different and tragic step because of heart disease and romance problems, resulting in a brutal murder of her mother. Isabella Guzman, who grew up in a harmonious family, underwent a drastic change after a big fight with her mother. In a tragic action in 2013 in Maryland, Guzman brutally killed his mother using a knife and a hammer, an event that shocked many and highlighted the issue of heartbreak and domestic violence. The court later sentenced Guzman to life imprisonment, acknowledging his mental disorder. To this day, the reason behind Isabella Guzman's murder of her own mother remains a mysterious murder that is under investigation. This case raises many questions and triggers further investigations. Susan Atkins What happens if a 15-year-old girl joins a lost sect in search of attention and confession this happened to Susan Atkins, a 15-year-old girl whose family had split up due to divorce. The violent and psychotic teachings of the Manson family, which are well known, also had an impact on Atkins. Atkins developed into one of the most devoted members of the Charles Manson cult with a strong conviction that he was a prophet. Atkins's first offense was Tate LaBianca's murder Atkins and other Manson family members carried out a string of vicious assaults on August 9, 1969, 
after breaking into the home of actress Sharon Tate and killing her and the other four occupants, they did the same to LaBianca. Following a string of vicious killings, Atkins and the Manson family were apprehended and given life sentences. Atkins expressed remorse for her acts while incarcerated and made repeated requests for her release. Nevertheless, she was denied access by the prison administration, the community, and the families of the victims who urged that Atkins serve out his whole term. Susan Atkins passed away at the California Medical Facility on September 24, 2009 due to cancer. Was Atkins among those who suffered as a result of the environment's formation? What are your thoughts, guys? Melinda Loveless. You'll be shocked if you know the facts of the murder story committed by Melinda Loveless. Melinda Loveless became famous after being involved in a horrific murder case in 1992, also involving three of her friends, namely Tony Lawrence, Laurie Tackett, and Hope Rippey, who tragically committed Shanda Shara murder. It all started with Melinda Loveless's falling in love with Amanda Heverin, but Melinda got jealous of Shanda Shara for dating Amanda Heverin, though Shanda Shara isn't at one more school with Amanda Heverin, Melinda Lovelace's jealousy doesn't go out. Finally, on January 1992, Melinda Lovelace, along with Tony Lawrence, Laurie Tackett and Hope Rippey, visited Shanda Shara's house and trapped her so that she could ride in the car while Melinda threatened Shanda with a knife. When they arrived, that's where Shanda Shara suffered six hours of brutal torture, like being beaten, knitted with ropes, stabbed, and tortured with iron tires. Shanda Shara died when she was burned alive. Tony Lawrence and Hope Rippey don't have a criminal record, so this incident scares Tony Lawrence. Tony Lawrence acknowledged the murder of Shanda Shara. In detail, Melinda Lovelace, Laurie Tackett, and Hope Rippey were arrested. Shanda Shara, killers, where are they now? Tony Lawrence received the lightest sentence for pleading guilty, so Tony was sentenced to 20 years in prison and released in December 2000. Hope Rippey received a 60-year sentence, and after appealing a 35-year reduction in her sentence, she was released in April 2002. Laurie Tackett, was sentenced to 60 years in prison. The main Shanda Shearer murderers, Melinda Lovelace, now still sentenced to life imprisonment. Unfortunately, we don't know how the love story of Melinda Lovelace, Amanda Heverin today, but this is so cruel and centered that jealousy about Shanda Shearer Amanda took Shanda Shearer's life tragically. Aileen Warnos. For self-defense? Yeah, that's what a woman named Aileen Warnos did. Aileen grew up in a messed up family and suffered harassment until she conceived at the age of 14. These events destroyed the mentality of Aileen Warnos. Then Aileen went out of the house and lived as a beggar and as a prostitute in the streets. Aileen Warnos has always been threatened with rape, which is why she committed a 1989 1990 murder that has already devoured seven male victims. Aileen always shoots a victim in a car or in a remote place, after which she robs the victim to meet her life needs on the road. In 1999, she was arrested while stealing her last victim's vehicle. Aileen Warnos has always insisted that she committed all these murders to protect herself from rape. But unfortunately, the evidence found suggests the opposite. The attempt to persuade the public for years about her murder was in vain since Aileen Warnos was tried on October 9th, 2002 on charges of murdering seven men and was subjected to the execution of a death injection. That's the end of the tragic life of Aileen Warnos. Dorothea Puente. a dreadful woman who started out as a loving and kind caregiver for the physically disabled. In 1980, 
Dorothea Puente opened a shelter for people with physical disabilities following the dissolution of her two marriages. She committed heinous murders by inviting weak people to her house, giving them tainted drinks, killing them, and then disposing of the body in the backyard to give the impression that he had died from a disease or accident. When firefighters discovered bones on Dorothea Puente's property while putting out a small fire in 1988, it became evident that she had engaged in cruel criminal conduct. Seven victims who had gone missing were found during a police case investigation, startling the villagers who had never suspected Puente's benevolence as the killer. Even after being given a life sentence, Dorothea Puente's motivation for the savage crime she committed remains a mystery. Her narrative, which shows a sharp turn from a thoughtful person to a killer, poses important queries concerning both human nature and crime prevention. What was your response to this story? Catherine Knight. A child who's a little conscious has a mental disorder. How's her life going? Young Catherine Knight has an unstable emotional disorder. When she grew up, she worked in a meat factory where she had access to the knives and meat cutters she used to commit horrible murders. It turns out that Catherine's frequently changing couples engaged in cases of physical violence against her partner, like stabbing when he fell asleep or frequently threatening with a knife. The culmination was on February 29th, 2000, when Catherine and her partner John Price were engaged in a trouble until Catherine's terrible act was committed. Surprisingly, Catherine stung Price with a 25-inch knife, apparently not there. Catherine peeled Price's skin and sliced his body parts to cook for the Price children's dinner. Catherine was sentenced to life in prison for a sadistic murder. Is this last case already making you crazy? Factors affecting crime as it happens. An undiagnosed or improperly treated psychiatric condition is one of many factors that frequently affects the motivations of violent perpetrators. Some women may become less empathic due to relationship issues or severe mental illnesses like psychopaths or antisocial personality disorder. This state motivates them to engage in frightful acts of violence to satisfy their unmet needs. That's not everything. It turns out that women can commit heinous murders as well, frequently as a result of external influence. These outside pressures and effects, whether they come from being a part of criminal organizations or being stuck in toxic relationships, have a big impact on the motivations of the offender. This could incite a woman to carry out a heinous act of violence. In summary, mirroring the shadowy aspect of humanity, the horrific killings carried out by women expose the darker side of human nature. Cruelty knows no gender. Women who have a propensity for sadistic atrocities demonstrate this as well. We can consider the negative aspects of human nature and work to stop them. How do you feel about the facts of today? Facts.